Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you the battle group preview for the Polish Home Army which is the first of four divisions added in the latest DLC, Death on the Vistula. The way this is going to work is I'm going to go through each of the sections showing off the units and giving my brief opinion on how they work and whether or not I think they're going to be valuable units in the game. So let's start off by looking in the recon tab. So first of all, there is the Sniper. She's a woman on her own who has an 80% accurate Car 98. She's very good at taking out support weapons like IG-18s and Pac-38, stuff like that. Stuff that basically can't fire back from the same range. Also fantastic for supporting infantry, only 10 points apiece. It's, they're pretty much a steal, honestly and maybe a good idea to bring both cards. I've been considering it myself. Anyway, in the next squad, we got a seven-man recon squad here, the Saar Serigi. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, but either way, MP40, six car 98s, and three of the satchel charges makes them very, very good. But you may notice this contraption in the background, the Kubus. Now this thing is pretty damn awesome. It comes with a Piat and a DP. Uh, the Piat having the 150mm of penetration, 200m range. 50% accuracy does mean that they miss quite a bit, but still an awesome vehicle. A real meme added to this battle group. You have to also one vet the recon squad here in order to get them, by the way, because you only have three available so make sure you do that if you want to get these bad boys. Uh, then we have a card of the BA-10Ms, pretty standard stuff. Uh, they have the HE shells, they're actually really useful. And they've also got two machine guns, so fantastic anti-infantry support. Uh, since they do have armor, uh, they can do a lot of damage from the 750 meter range. Uh, then I have another card of the SAR Zerge. And... Yeah, I think these are going to be really, really useful just to dot around and if they bump into enemy squads, they can defend themselves. Then we have the Zwia Daoshi. Oh, Zwia Daoshi. Um, these have two man squads with the PPSH and pretty standard stuff. Can be brought in with the Universal Carrier, the BA-20. Um, they've also got the Universal Carrier there. I think that has a, a Dushka on the top of it. Actually, no, I think that's the one with the boys' AT rifle. Yeah, it is. Uh, 20 millimeters of penetration there, AP shells. Uh, then there's the carrier Dushka, which is the one with the Dushka on top. And then we have the uh, Sierski Zviad, uh, which have four men, uh, two MP28, MD26. And they also have a Granate Buxa with exceptional stealth. The Granate Buxa has the 60 millimeters of penetration, which is actually quite good for killing things all the way up to like Panzer fours. So bear that in mind. Trouble is low strength means that when they reveal themselves, they're probably gonna die pretty quickly. And they're unlikely to probably kill with their first hit because the damage is pretty low on the Granite Buxer. Anyway, moving on to the infantry tab. Uh, the first unit we have here are the Ochenichi. And I was singing these guys' praises in the latest uh, gameplay video. Uh, they have two submachine guns, 12 car 98s, a machine gun, and the Molotov cocktails. Now, the Molotov cocktails are what make them really, really good. They're basically partisan squads from the, I think it's the 33rd Guards, uh, but basically on steroids since they have 15 strength, uh, which is very, very hard to break down in sort of mid-range fighting uh, due to all of the car 98s being able to fire. So pretty damn strong units, and you can see we've got a card in Phase A, Phase B, and also in Phase C. Uh, the cards in Phase A and B also have one star veteran C, since you're never really going to need uh, more than 15 or 9 in th those phases. Then the next card we have is the Grupish de Marvi. Uh, these guys have four MP44s, three car 98s, uh, an MG42 and the Panzerfaust there, eight-man squads. Really good at medium-range engagements again. And honestly, if you have two of these squads next to each other against like one Panzer Grenadier, you're going to melt that Panzer Grenadier very quickly indeed. Then we have the first of the different leader squads. I think this one's probably the best one since the leaders have two MP44s, three car 98s, the machine gun and a false patron. Uh, these are the Party Zantov. 
So, yeah, definitely worth bringing along. I guess they're like partisan leaders. Uh, the next unit to show off is the Saperzi. Now, these guys are fantastic. They have two submachine guns and they have two flamethrowers. So really, really strong at the close quarters combat and in phase B. If you want close quarter troops, these are what you're going to want to rely on. They come in at the one-star veterancy, keep lead leaders nearby them, potentially with the commander buff, make them three-star. They'll basically take rece uh, reduced damage. Higher veterancy infantry takes less damage, by the way. Um, and you'll win basically every infantry engagement you come across. Except for maybe against pioneers if they manage to throw grenades. Other than that, we have the Berlin Govici. Um, these guys are eight-man squads again. They have two of the PVSH, four Mosin Nagants, a DP, and a PTRD. Uh, the PTRD relatively decent at uh, shooting light armored vehicles at medium range uh, with the 500 meters there and uh, 35 millimeters of penetration. Good for half tracks and sort of light recon vehicles. I think they're great for taking out. And then finally in phase C over here we have the uh, party Zanichi. Uh, these guys are just partisans and um, they're not particularly strong. They have the WZ-98. I think that's just car 98 right and uh, mp40 mg34 and the sticky grenades there four of those so a reasonable amount of ammunition strength of nine maybe not the best choice but there's not really much else i could fit into the deck at this point uh, the only thing that i might consider doing is swapping out maybe the party zanchi uh, or the ochanichi in phase b uh, because having more Oshinichi in Phase C will give you a lot of longevity. The great thing about a lot of these infantry squads in the Polish Honam Army is they're very cheap for what they offer, especially these 15 strength squads. I reckon these are going to get nerfed at some point just because they are so cost efficient. And even at close range, because of the Molotov, they do tons of damage. So definitely one to look out for. Other choices are the Ob Ko Krakow Chi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, if I'm pronouncing that anywhere near. It's like Krajowski, maybe? Anyway, um, they've got an M39, FEG 43M, M1 carbines, and 24M Madsen machine gun. 30-man squad's not too bad, actually. Uh, you can bring them in at uh, one-star veterancy in Phase B, and you do get 16 of them. This is another one that I could switch out the Ochanichi for, honestly, uh, since you do get the 13 men instead. So you could pull the Partisans out, uh, put in the Obko Krajawi. <laughs> I'm sure you guys just come along to laugh at me doing these pronunciations, but I try my best. And honestly, guys, if you have any improvements for me in the comments, then make sure to let me know. Either way, um, swapping these out for the Ochinichi and then putting the Ochinichi in phase C uh, might be a better bet. So let's move on to the tank tab. So in the tank tab, we're basically just full of captured German tanks, uh, but you only get one on each card, and they are set with certain phases. So the Panzer IV here you can get in phase A. Uh, it's a Panzer IV H, uh, so the decent Panzer IV. Then we have Twat, which is a an ace unit, uh, captured Hetzer. You only get one of them again in phase A. Uh, same sort of loadout as the German version, except for them, they don't have APCR, um, so bear that in mind. Um, then you have a Tiger, which is only available in Phase B, um, really decent sort of support tank for your infantry. And then there's three cards available of Panther Gs. Now the nice thing about these Panther Gs is they do come with their APCR shells, so well worth taking, in my opinion, the best tanks you can get, although you are going to have to babysit them because you don't have much availability. So in the late game, if you lose them, you're going to be pretty much out of luck. Other choices in this particular battle group is the M14. This is a captured Italian tank from the Germans on the Eastern Front, which is kind of crazy, but either way, it's in the game. They have some heat shells, but they're not very effective. They've only got 65 millimeters of penetration and 30% accuracy, so don't expect to be hit in the broadside of a barn with those. And then we have some AP shells with better accuracy and better penetration. 
and then the HU shells and this would be more of an infantry support tank but I don't think they're worth it since you only get three of them 25 points then there's the T-70s, you can only bring these in phase C, which is quite interesting. Great infantry support tanks, not really going to be doing anything more than that. you got the T-70 command version, the T-34-76 command version, and then the T-34-76-1943, which is the cheaper 45-point version with the 75mm of frontal armour. You can only bring these in phase C as well, and you don't really get that much availability. So, yeah, that's why I'm going for all of the German tanks, as they are just much better value for money uh, throughout the game. Right, moving on to the support tab, we have a captured Borgvard. Now I showed this in action in the latest gameplay, but honestly I'm not entirely sure it really belongs in the deck, just because Borgvards are very lackluster and not great value for money. Uh, they're 40 points, so you've got to kill something that's worth 40 points or more to make them worth it, and most of the time that doesn't happen, they just end up getting killed from range, or if they do kill something, it's just like an infantry squad that costs like 20 points or 30 points. So not the most cost efficient unit in the world, but great fun to just kind of meme out your enemy. Uh, then we have the officer. These guys are just your commander. There's the Fiat supply trucks. One interesting thing about the Polish Home Army is they only get one card of supply. So choosing which phase to bring them in is quite something. And honestly... Maybe phase A would be the best phase for supply trucks, actually, uh, having played this uh, division a couple of times, just because in the artillery tab, if I go over to it quickly, I don't have any artillery other than the mortars. So we, it's not like we need supply for our artillery in phase B. The only thing you'd need supply for in phase B is potentially your tanks, which would then mean that you need more Fiat. But the reason I bring them in phase B at the moment and I haven't changed them is because I tend to play 3v344, so having those extra supply available uh, that you can help your teammates with as well, um, especially since they've cut back on uh, supply in general across the board, I think it's worth uh, having those couple extra. Then in phase C, I've got another commander just in case the officer has died by then. Uh, having the commander uh, accompany the infantry command here i've got uh, like a second unit of command in phase c as you can see um they really really buff up your infantry your abundance of infantry in the late game and make them a lot harder to kill which makes your sort of man spam a lot more effective so i think it's worth having two commanders um, other choices in the support tab include the two-man flamethrower squads, pretty common stuff, except from these guys have a Sten gun, which is quite cool. Good utility unit for the smoke grenades, and uh, if you bring them in at one-star veterancy, uh, can definitely help your infantry pushes in the early game. Uh, then there's the Maxim machine gun, really lackluster machine gun at the moment, but it's there if you want it. we got the uh, 76 mil infantry gun available with the two damage and the uh, 12 round per minute rate of fire. Um, you can bring them in at uh, one star veterancy in phase B. Uh, you can't actually get these in phase A, which is why they're not really taking a sort of seat, I guess, <laughs> or a activation slot in my deck. Um, I would probably replace these, though, with the Borgvard if I had to, or I'd just take the Borgvard out and use the activation points for something else. But either way, they're there. Um, not as effective as the OBs because they don't have the heat rounds. Uh, there is a captured machine guns and you can bring these in phase b as well and then there's the motorcycle command i really like how these guys have these like sweaters on they look really cool um nice uniform they got there let's move on to the anti-tank tab so here we have the small 37 mil but i can't sing the praises of these guns enough i've seen these kill some ridiculous targets already uh, with their crazy rate of fire. Uh, you can already see with a two star veterancy that they get 20 round per minute rate of fire and that can go up to about 22, 23 round per minute rate of fire when they're three star veterancy. So <laughs> they are crazy fast firing and their AP shells have 70 millimeters of penetration and they also have HE shells. Now the damage of the HE shells is pretty low but over time they will suppress infantry from a distance and it's very good for supporting your machine gun infantry. And they are cheap as well, as you can see, 30 points. And then I've got them here in the uh, Fiat 508, uh, which has a machine gun on it. 
and that's just there to help support the max range although they tend to just get killed by light arms fire so it may not even be worth uh, paying the extra five points to bring those in uh, then I have a card of the uh, pack, captured pack 40s um, these have the guys with the cool autumn camo on them um, manning the gun which is very cool um, I'm bringing them in at the one star veterancy so you can make them three stars very easily with the commander buff uh, then I've got another card of the 37 mils we've got the 45 mils here uh, which are the classic Russian 45 mil does come with the APCR shells uh, so you can use them and uh, then also the 75 mil shells as normal slightly less rate of fire than the uh, 37 mil uh, but still a very effective AT gun that I've killed many Panthers and Tigers with in the past. Now we have this squad, the Sabo Tazichi, maybe, <laughs> something like that. Um, they have four submachine guns, two G43s, a Panzerstreck, and the HE grenades. Now the Panzerstreck HE grenade combination is absolutely crazy. These squads are very, very good, but also very, very costly. Uh, 45 points apiece. Now something I haven't mentioned yet is I do play this Juggernaut which is the reason I have 18 of these in Phase C. You can get six of them in Phase A still so if you wanted to play it more of like a Vanguard style then that would still be sort of relevant because uh, the availability is actually pretty damn high. Uh, so something uh, to definitely bring along. I think these are almost a, ne a necessity in the anti-tank tab just because they have the potential to get so much value. And then I have a card of the Ziz 3s. You get nine of them. And I think it's important to have a lot of AT in this particular battle group just because your tanks, or the number of tanks, is quite lacking. So you've got to make that up with availability in the anti tank tab. Now, other squads available we have the Piat squads here, the Drazina, Drazina. Um, Piat. Um, they have two Sten guns, so some lead lease British weapons. Uh, with the Piet there as well. And then we've got the PTRD version of the two-man squads with the 35mm penetration 500m range. These also have some smoke grenades, whereas the uh, Piat squad does not. Uh, the pack 50 mils, um, they're also available in Phase A if you want them, uh, but the 37 should do the job until Phase B, uh, where you get a little bit more firepower in the tank tab. So, yeah. Maybe you could squeeze these in if you can find the two extra points. Honestly, maybe dropping the Borgvard in the support tab and bringing in the pack 50 mils wouldn't even be a bad idea. So maybe think about doing that yourselves. But for now, I'm just going to keep my division as it is. Uh, moving into the anti-air tab, <laughs> it's very, very lackluster. You have one card of flak 20 mils, captured flak 20 mils. And you have also can bring them in with the uh, Browning uh, heavy machine gun. Uh, mounted on the back of the truck there. So I've got six of them with six Browning machine gun trucks. Uh, the other two choices in the anti-air tab are the Fiat 621 Hotchkiss, uh, which is just a double Hotchkiss on the back of a truck. Not terribly effective. You can see the damage is pretty low here. Not going to be uh, forcing back aircraft very quickly. And then we have, of course, the age-old Gaz AAA Maxim. In the artillery tab, <laughs> this leaves a lot to be desired. We've got the 80mm mortar here. Uh, we're going to be bringing those in phase A at a 1 star veterancy, so we can make them 3 star veterancy very easily and get that super high rate of fire uh, that just allows you to make more concentrated mortar strikes. And then in phase B, I've got the 152mm off map. Uh, this off map is actually very strong. It fires 40 rounds with each salvo. As you can see here, we get 120 HE shells from the off-map artillery. Split that into three because you get three strikes, 40 a pop. And if you're looking at the damage and the blast, you can pin down anything in an area with 40 rounds. It's actually pretty nuts. Um, it's, I've also seen this uh, pick up some kills on armor in the past, but you're going to have to be uh, lucky for that or hit units that have already been hit with HE power uh, damage before. Other choices, we have the um, WZ-1897, uh, which is, I think, around like a 70, yeah, 75 mil gun. 
Um, it has the HE shells for the long range engagement at the 8,125 meter range, but the accuracy leaves a lot to be desired and the AP shells aren't all that either. So you can't really use it for that role as well. Then we got the LEFH 18M 105 mils. Uh, these are your standard long range artillery. Um, but again, low accuracy makes them pretty naff, honestly, and not really worth bringing in. And then the 120 mils, again, same deal. Uh, lack of accuracy. Um, the 82 82mm mortars are just so much better, or 81mm mortar in this case. Uh, they just fire faster, more concentrated strike, whereas the 120 mils, they just never seem to hit what you want them to. At least from my experience lately. And further to that, you could only bring them in phase C. So there's uh, there's that as well. Um, in the air tab, this is where things are a little bit more interesting for the end of this uh, battle group preview. Um, we have the Yak-9 uh, that's going to be brought in in phase B at the one star veterancy. Um, veterancy always increased agility, I believe, but now you can see that represented on the right side here, if you increase the veterancy of an aircraft, the agility goes up all the way to excellent. I don't think there's a level above excellent. Uh, so that's worth thinking about, but you can only bring these in at one star veterancy anyway. So I'm going to be bringing them in, in at phase B uh, when I have a larger lack of AA. And um, these are going to end up going to have to cover the sky for me. Uh, throughout the rest of the game alongside uh, the p51 mustangs you do get some p51 mustangs here i'm bringing these in phase c but as you can see i've skipped quite a few units uh, we have a lot of il2s and these all have different loadouts we've got one with four frag rockets which is good for taking out uh, support weapons and also pinning down infantry uh, then we have the rockets with ap capability uh, so these are good for taking out tanks and you can take out quite heavy tanks with these uh, but i would definitely recommend always double striking a heavy tank if you're going to try and take it out and also aiming for the side armor so if you want to hit something like a panther uh, fly to the side of it and then turn them in so they find the side shots with the rockets now your opponent might always well might uh, sometimes sorry uh, reverse away from the incoming strikes in order to face their front armor towards it in which case you're going to be less likely to get the kill but you're almost always going to pin down a tank with one strike from these IL-2s so there's a couple ways you can do it you can do one strike and use units on the ground to take advantage of the falling back tank or you can use two strikes in an attempt to go for the kill with the aircrafts themselves but I think it would definitely depend on how much AA uh, you're going to have to deal with so I've got two cards of those in phase C and they're going to be supporting our infantry man spam in the late game alongside the IL-2 M3 that has the 60mm napalm bombs. Now again these are great for destroying support weapons but they're also pretty damn good at melting infantry squads uh, so worth a try at least. Now in the latest gameplay I did use all of these biplanes. The uh, Tamans, these guys have four 50 kilogram bombs, these ones have six 50 kilogram bombs, and these ones have the cluster AP. Now the cluster AP ones, if they kill a tank like a Panzer IV, then they generally pen themselves off, which is quite nice. But the worst part about biplanes in general is their slow speed. Now fighters aren't really the counter to biplanes because if you have a bunch of them in formation, the fighter's only going to kill one and then have to fly all the way around in a big loop to come around and kill another one. What kills biplanes is AA, because the biplane, once it comes under fire from AA, is going to take so long to get out of range of the AA again. <laughs> and so they've died very quickly, even to minimal AA. Uh, I was pretty lucky in the gameplay that I did, uh, because my opponent had either had his AA killed previously, or just hadn't bring, brought much in, so I got away with it. But in general, I wouldn't really recommend the biplanes to play around with. Uh, then there's the IL-2 uh, Recon variant. You can see they have the, the Polish colors there, pretty cool. We've got uh, access to Yak-9s. Again, they're forced to be brought in at uh, One Star Veterancy. This is just a second card of the Yak-9s that we already had. And then there's the Yak-9T. Again, you can only get limited availability, and they're forced to bring in Phase B or Phase C. Uh, decent firepower on these, uh, but in Phase C, you can get, obviously, four P-51 Mustangs, so 
you'd pretty much always go for the Mustangs over the Yak-9T in that case. Uh, and then you can get another card of the IL-2 and 3s and that's pretty much your lot. So there you go, the Polish Home Army. It's actually a really interesting deck and I've had a lot of fun playing it. I haven't actually managed to get round to trying like the full man's ban strategy in Phase C, uh, but having to be uh, very careful with your Panthers and Tigers is really interesting and gives you something to focus on throughout while your infantry just kind of blindly pushes forwards and provides recon for you. But in general, the way that I saw this playing out is your infantry is your front line and recon, and then you just support it as much as you can with what you have left, which isn't honestly that much, especially when it comes to like AA and artillery. You don't have much in those sort of lines to help your infantry out. Like if you imagine Tartalek, and they're really good man spam uh, because they can support their infantry with really strong artillery in the late game. But in this particular division, that's not the case. You don't have any artillery at all. So you're pretty stuck unless you keep your support units alive and that's what is going to be your focus um, and in the late game if you're dealing with heavy armor and a lot of it you can just bring out the IL-2s so at some point I'll probably do a video similar to my Bazookly video where I bring out a bunch of IL-2s and swarm the sky with them once again but for now that's it that's a quick battle group preview of the Polish home army hopefully that gives you an idea of what uh, to look forward to in future videos and also if you are going to buy the DLC potentially. But that's it from me. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.